Hey guys, Matt here, and at long last, I am back in civilization. As you can see, I'm not currently in the van because we sold the van partway through the summer as part of basically downsizing our already minimalized life. And we are doing a temporary rental for the months between now and when I depart for the ADT at the end of March. We're actually in a remote spot in Riverside, AKA the Valley of the Dirt People. It's been really awesome because it's quiet and we actually have plenty of room, so we're able to go through everything in storage and kind of repack everything for our plans moving forward. We are still basically based out of Orange County, Irvine, Lake Forest area. Uh, that is where the wilderness class that Jen and I teach is. That is where Jen's job is. An average week for us is I'm out here on Monday. Jen is staying in the campgrounds. Tuesday, I drive in to teach class, uh, the wilderness class, and I usually stay Tuesday night with her in the campground. Wednesday, I finish up some stuff around town, come back out here. I'm alone here Wednesday night, Thursday night. She comes out Friday and we get the weekend together. It's actually worked out pretty well. So I finished the trail on December 11th and I was fortunate enough that a very kind trail angel drove all the way out and got me at the border. <laughs> that is not a trivial drive getting to the southern terminus of the CDT. He drove me back to Las Cruces, dropped me off at a hotel, stayed there that night, so what do you do the day after finishing the Triple Crown? <laughs> if you're like me, you wake up feeling so crappy like you were drinking last night but didn't have the fun. The next morning, I picked up a rental car and I drove over to Colorado Springs, about seven, eight hour drive, where I turned in the rental car and my parents came and got me, took me to their house. I stayed with them for a day, and then on the 14th, I took off for Southern California. Unfortunately, a pretty big winter storm did hit while I was with my parents, and I briefly thought it might delay my reunion with Jen. But fortunately, with two days of hard driving, I was able to get back to Southern California. So on December 15th, I made it back to Southern California, uh, wrapping up a epic summer that started all the way back on March 15th when I left in the middle of one of those atmospheric rivers with things flooding everywhere. Numbers wise, this season I did about 208 miles on the Arizona Trail before snow on the northern end and closed trails caused me to jump over to the Grand Enchantment Trail. I did 810 miles from Phoenix to Albuquerque on the Grand Enchantment Trail. And then I jumped over to the Mississippi as soon as Jen was out of school. The Mississippi was 2,450 miles via canoe. And as soon as that was done, I jumped back to the Continental Divide Trail up in Colorado, where I did about 1,367 miles. When I did finally arrive back in Southern California, I had about 10 days to deal with all the urgent business and then it was time to get moving again. We spent December 26th with Jen's family. My family was able to do without me since they've been seeing me a lot this year in various states of injury and excitement. And then the day after we actually drove down to Mexico, uh, crossed the border, took a flight down to uh, San Jose del Cabo, and we spent 10 weeks days on a liveaboard diving in with like the sharks and the manta rays and all of that down in Socorro. That was really cool. We had not been able to dive for almost two years, sadly. <laughs> the entire time I was back in town last year, there was rainstorm after rainstorm and we never got proper shore diving conditions. So hoping to uh, not wait that long again because we both really do love diving. That trip did go pretty well. It was an amazing experience having manta rays coming so close that they're practically like smacking you with their uh, wings. Uh, only downside was I did end up getting sick on the boat and missing a day of diving. The crew was sick when we arrived and it basically went through everybody. Uh, the other thing is I touched salt water. So during the year, I build up really great calluses on my feet. By the end of the hiking season, you know, you can tap on the pads of my foot and it's like, ah, oh yeah, that's solid calluses. And then I touch salt water and they all just dissolve. I came back a couple of days later, I uh, feel something weird on my foot and yeah, peeling like crazy. So now in addition to teaching the class, I am trying to rebuild calluses. So I am ready to go when I get to Delaware in another two months and change. As always, coming off trail has been a bit of a mixed bag. On one hand, I love having access to things like showers, toilets, hot food. Being reunited with Jen and getting to see friends and family is all great for about two weeks. And then the post-trail malaise sets in. This is my fourth time going through this process, so by now I kind of know what to expect and I at least have a few tricks to be able to deal with it. 
So yeah, that's basically how things have been going. We've been enjoying our quiet time and really looking forward to the next big adventure. As of right now, I am teaching until March 19th. That's when the wilderness class ends, and the moment it ends, I am going to take off driving for Colorado and then continue on to Delaware. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the videos this summer. I know everybody was hoping to see more of Jen on this, however, she has been really busy at school and I haven't wanted to harass her too much by sticking the camera in her face. We should have more videos shortly, including the Socorro videos with both of us, and I'm hoping to get a bunch of videos done talking about how the Triple Crown went, things I learned, and also a video series about planning the Mississippi Source to Sea, since that's one of those trips I really think everybody should know about and hopefully do. What do we do on days off? It is a great struggle. Because <laughs> here, Jen is trying to separate magnets. Why is she trying to separate magnets? This is the refrigerator in our rental. I wanted to hang things like this, you know, triple crown bandana. I'm like, hey, I know you have magnets. Could you bring my, me magnets? <laughs> she went all super villain on me. This is like the time I let her play Mass Effect and she turned into Evil Shepherd. Seriously, <laughs> her playthrough was dark. I was the good one, obviously. I was actually role-playing like there were consequences. When she role-plays, she always plays the bad guy. <laughs> That's not you true. think she's nice because she giggles, but yes. Anyway, I wanted magnets to hang, and she didn't get me like normal magnets. They're superhuman rare earth. Don't let Matt or small children swallow them. And now she appears to have lost them. Wait, Hi, Jen. You asked us I teach you for magnets. Yeah, seriously, where did that one go? <laughs>